Board of Directors of the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System here on uh, June 25, approximately 10 a.m. And welcome to the meeting to everybody. I'm David Lillard, Tennessee State Treasurer and Chairman of the TCRS Board of Trustees. Our first thing is to uh, is to call the roll, but what we're going to do is we're going to read the statement of necessity and uh, we will call the roll on the statement of necessity to adopt it after a motion and second is made and your answer to the roll call be your roll, to the statement of necessity motion will also be your response to the roll call. Statement of necessity is this meeting is being held pursuant to Tennessee Code Annotated Section 8-44 dash 108 B2, where the Board of Trustees of the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System, i.e. the TCRS, is participating by electronic and other means of communication, i.e. teleconference and video conference and not by physical quorum. The law requires that in order for a quorum of members to participate by electronic or other means of communication, that the governing body must make a determination that necessity exists. The law further provides that such determination and arrestation of the facts and circumstances on which it is based must be included in the minutes of the meeting. The necessity for the board to meet by teleconference is that the board needs to consider and vote on items that are time sensitive and critical to the functioning of the retirement system. Among other things, the board must review and discuss reports from the administrative audit and investment committees, consider appointments to the board, and discuss the request for participation of TCRS by a political subdivision and consider adoption of that. In addition, the board must meet no later than June 30, 2021, in order to fulfill its statutory requirement for a quarterly meeting. A quorum of the board cannot meet physically because of the coronavirus pandemic. All right, that's the statement of necessity. Is there a motion to adopt the statement of necessity? This is Trey Hargett, I move to adopt. All right, Secretary Moses, is there a second? Second, Juan Williams. All right, Commissioner Williams seconds it, and uh, there's no discussion on that. We'll call the roll on the motion to adopt a statement of necessity. And as I said earlier, your response to the um, calling of that roll will also be your answer to the roll call for quorum purposes. Jamie uh, Dat Wayman, the uh, director of TCRS, and our executive secretary, call the roll on the motion. And Mr. Barker. Aye. Mr. Bohannon. Aye. Commissioner Ely. Mr. Ellis. Aye. Dr. Fisher. Aye. Secretary Hargett. Aye. Mr. Kemp. Aye. Mr. Laney. Aye. Treasurer Lillard. Aye. Miss Moore. Aye. Comptroller Mumpower. Miss Shaw. Aye. Miss Smith. Aye. Director Tate. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Aye. Mr. Wormsley. Aye. And I vote aye as well. It's unanimous, Treasurer. All right. So that item passes and the roll call was answered sufficiently. So we have a quorum present. <clears throat> so we're going to skip over approval of the minutes right now. We'll combine that with another item down the line here. But number five is Board of Trustee Committee reports. And number five A is the Administrative Committee. Uh, Mr. Wayman, the Executive Director, you're, you're to report for the committee. Thank you, Treasurer. The administrative committee met this morning at 9 a.m. via WebEx. We uh, approved the statement of necessity to hold it by uh, telephonically or by electronically. We also uh, approved the minutes of the March 26 board meeting. We heard from Ms. Mary Beth Franklin about the city or town of Tiptonville, who is petitioning for membership effective July 1st in the hybrid plan without cost controls, and we'll take that up uh, a little bit later in the meeting today. I provided a legislative update indicating that there were six bills that were enacted uh, by the 112th General Assembly that impacted TCRS and, and what those were and the plans to get those implemented and, and started. 
Uh, then Ms. Mary Beth Franklin and Drew Freeman provided an update on operations related to employer reporting and participant education and the financial empowerment area. And then Eric and Nail provided an update uh, for operations for member and financial services of TCRS. And with that, that is my report of the administrative committee. Okay, any questions of Mr. Wyman about the administrative committee report? Seeing none, we'll go to item 5B, five, five which is the audit committee report. We'll call on the Honorable Mr. Parker, who is the chairman of the committee. Uh, thank you, Treasurer Lillard. Uh, the audit committee met this morning at 8 o'clock with all members, all five members present uh, on WebEx. Uh, we first approved the statement of necessity for telephonic participation. Then we also approved the minutes from our previous meeting on March the 26th. We then had a report from uh, Mr. Gentry, Kevin Gentry, on the results of the internal audit on the quarterly duplicate member analytic. Uh, then Mr. Earl Pierce gave us a review of the internal audits project tracker sheet, which keeps us up to date on all the things that are going on, all the different components of uh, various audits that are underway at the present time. Uh, both of those were outstanding reports. Uh, we then had the uh, report from the comptroller's hotline. There were no responses uh, noted on the comptroller's hotline. Uh, Mr. Kevin Gentry then reviewed an internal audit article regarding uh, the various uh, activities during the uh, pandemic period regarding the uh, uh, legal uh, investigations of financial reporting during the pandemic, which was an interesting article and I would encourage uh, all of you to follow up on that. Uh, that's our report. We had no uh, comments uh, from the public uh, during uh, during our meeting, which was uh, a part of the uh, process. Uh, that's our report from the audit committee, Mr. Treasurer. All right, any questions of Chairman Barker on that good report? All right, seeing none, we'll go to item 5C, which is the investment committee report. I chair the investment committee and I'll give that report. Uh, the investment committee met recently by WebEx and uh, adopted several uh, investments for the benefit of the system and also discussed other matters relating to our investments and reviewed those things. That concludes the report. Is there any question about that? All right, seeing none, next item is item six, Board of Trustee Appointments, Mr. Wayman. Hey, thank you, Treasurer. On page 30, beginning on page 31 of your packet that was sent out, uh, we have appointments. Uh, the Tennessee Municipal League, uh, Mr. Tim Ellis serves as the representative on the Board of Trustees for the Tennessee Municipal League. His term was set to expire June 30th of this year, so they have reappointed Mr. Ellis uh, to serve on the Board of Trustees representing the Tennessee Municipal League. Uh, the County Officials Association of Tennessee, uh, Mr. Bill Kemp is the representative that represents that group um, on the Board of Trustees. His term was also set to expire June 30, 2021, and he has been reappointed to a new uh, term. And finally, the Tennessee County Services Association term was set to expire June 30, 2021, and Mr. Bob Wormsley has been reappointed uh, to serve on the Board of Trustees representing the Tennessee County Services Association. So the three of those members have been reappointed by their respective uh, groups that for membership or for representation on the TCRS Board of Trustees. Okay, any questions in regard to Board of Trustee appointments there? We wanna congratulate each of them and of course thank them for their past service and look forward to their continuing service in the future as key members of the board. Next item is item seven, investment report. Uh, Mr. Michael Brakebill, Chief Investment Officer, you're recognized. Great, thank you, uh, Treasurer. Um, first, I'd like to call on Margaret Jadala of Veris to go through the quarterly presentation. Thank you and, and good morning. Um, I'm gonna start with, this is the first quarter report and then uh, Michael will be giving an update beyond that. In the first quarter on page one, this gives a summary of the first quarter and the market environment. So in essence, this is a time period where there was a lot of optimism. The vaccines have been have been ruled out, economies were reopening, and further stimulus has been passed to further boost the economy. So this made for a very strong tailwind in the first quarter. 
quarter with US GDP coming in at 6.4% and has since been revised upwards to you know, above 7%. Um, so definitely very conducive to strong returns for the risk markets. On the, um, the inflation side, I'm not gonna talk too much about that because I know Michael has several pages on it, but as of the first quarter, CPI was still muted but longer term bond yields had strengthened. So when yields rise, then, um, then prices drop because of inflationary concerns on the longer term and you'll see some negative bond returns for that reason. Um, and so that's really the backdrop. So this made for a strong first quarter. But if you go to page four, which is the, the market index returns, you can see how this results, small print, but you can see how this results in very strong numbers. So the first quarter is very solid um, across the board uh, for equities, bonds, you can see negatives for the reasons that I noted. And for the, um, you know, for that one year period, really remarkable returns for the equity markets, because this is coming off the bottom, uh, keep in mind. Um, and so in equities that the US markets did best, um, small cap made a big rebound, Russell 2000, 94.8% for, for that one year period. Um, yeah, S&P 56% really strong. The IFA, the non-US market, 45%, emerging market, 58%. So really strong returns. On the bonds, you can see such a spread. So investment grade bonds were at 0 0.7. So that's beyond a 50 degree, 50% 50 spread, which is you know, quite remarkable. In terms of risk assets, you can see high yield at 23%. So again, risky assets doing better. And with that as a backdrop, I was gonna go to page Five next. So on page five, this is your asset allocation. As always, you're fairly close to target. Um, so your target allocation is shown there in the middle. And importantly, your the assets grew with these strong markets too, as of the end of the first quarter, $62.4 billion. Um, in terms of there, the target allocation, this is your interim allocation. You're working towards a longer term strategic allocation with, um, you know, a little more in basically 10% real estate, 10% private, 10% strategic lending. And you can see that um, you're, looks like you're above, you are above your interim target for private equity, but really for that term strategic target. Uh, so that's, those are kind of the differences in terms of asset allocation. If you go to page six, this is a new page, and sorry for the, the, the tiny print, but this is to give you just a high level overview of the portfolio without all the, the manager line items. Um, first, I'll, talk, I'll point to the top line where total returns, again, solid at 3.27% at for the quarter. And you can see in, in absolute terms, like, you know, very strong, very strong one year, 29.43 and, and you know, above, above actuarial across the board. Um, and then, for fiscal year to late to date, you, you you're not quite there yet, but you will you know most certainly be well above your actual return there. What's really important on the, the top the top there is that you're compared to your policy index and the as allocated is kind of where you are right now compared to your your you know your your policy where you're working towards. Both of those numbers are fairly close right now. And importantly, you're ahead of policy and as allocated all the way across the board from the three months, you know, all the way out to the to the 10 years. If you look at the asset classes and those returns on a relative basis, if you compare the, the asset class returns to the underlying benchmark returns, you can see in equities you're you know, you're you're a bit behind, and we'll talk about that. Um, but in all the other areas, for most, if not all, you're ahead of those policy, those asset class benchmarks all the way across the board. So a very good report card in that regard. Um, so I'll go to a couple details on the following pages, page seven. And here again, I'll just point out something that, that goes through the report is solid three month return and you you know fiscal year and one year very strong absolute numbers which are certainly you know adequate to underlying assets and your funded status within US equities um, first as a reminder this is internal management very cost efficient 
and benchmark aware. So uh, you're taking uh, you're kind of basically your 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 risk compared to the benchmark is fairly low compared to a lot of other plans. Um, within index, which is thirty percent, of course, we match the index. Large quant. We've seen a, a lot of negatives here until recently. Factor returns and, and kind of factor tailwinds value in particular was really out of favor. And that was something that was uh, um, a detriment to a lot of um, quant strategies. So that has turned around. I, I didn't mention the growth value rotation. So value is doing as of the first quarter did much growth, which is a, a, a big reversion from 2020, um, you know, pre vaccine. And so that improved the large quant returns. Sector, this is this is more of a kind of a fundamental based approach. This has a higher quality bias. So you can see uh, a little behind for the quarter, behind for the year, and that uh, embedded quality bias worked against sector. Um, and one thing, another thing I want to point out is once every five years we do kind of a deep dive operational review, which looks at that. The, all of the different uh, strategies and structure within within uh, TCRS. So we're going to be doing that, and we'll be coming back from some written findings next quarter as well that that are, are more detailed. Um, new cap ahead for the quarter, but for that year, you can see behind. And there's a valuation sensitivity, and over that past year period, um, you know, highly valued stocks did did quite well. So that valuation sensitivity was was a negative to the approach. Um, on page eight, small cap, uh, I'll just point out again, those very strong absolute returns that were added to the plan, a smaller part of your portfolio, but you know certainly 18% for the quarter and 94% for the year is, is added to, to, to the plan. Um, within going into international equity, this is an asset class that did well um, per that report card, and you disaggregate your developed from your emerging, and for the the overall and for the developed, again your your returns at the asset class level and the developed level side <coughs> of benchmark all the way across the board, and this consistency is is pretty rare to see in a, in a report. Um, and your the their managers by size by style. And you can see some different returns. They're compared to broad benchmarks, and the the differences in absolute returns really have to do with their style, if they have a quality bias or not, um, these kinds of things. So all managers return within expectations. And this is a, a, a per our scope, we review manager every year in a detailed fashion. We just completed that process and revetted the you know the, the managers within that portfolio. Um, Going into fixed income on page 10, here you can see um, for the quarter negative 6.4. And uh, like I was saying, when, when the bond yield grows, prices drop. And so there were negative returns there. And that's and it's slightly flat for the year. Something that's unique about your fixed income portfolio, a couple of things. One is that you use a long duration benchmark. So um, a lot of other views, like a six year duration benchmark, yours is, is 10 plus. And um, another one is that you have two components. One, you've got you divide two thirds into sectors that are also benchmark aware, aware in their construction. And then a, another amount, which is uh, kind of more credit focused with shorter duration. So the majority, which is on this page, the returns are very much in line with the strategies themselves. So um, for the quarter, government five plus, you know, it's, it's worth as one would expect. And over the year, credit with the pandemic and the credit facilities, corporates were, you know, did, did the best of all the sectors. And you can see that governments, you can see that the reverse and then mortgages were in between. So the sector specific approach was really the driver behind the returns. And going on to page 11, I won't say as much about, about the, the private areas. Um, high level in privates, it takes longer to, the portfolio has lagged pricing. So that's why there's this one quarter lag in, in the, the that's reported here. Um, and all are ahead of their respective benchmarks. Um, and private equity did particularly well on an absolute return basis. 
um, cash, you can see at zero, but if, if, if you, um, rates drop to zero, that's, you know, that's one, what one would expect. And I think Michael's going to comment on that too. Um, so in a nutshell, it was a solid quarter, a very strong year, well ahead of, of your actual return and your consistency of your um, total portfolio and asset class returns was you know, very good, very, very strong um, risk profile and practice, but risk of the portfolio is dead on with policy and as allocated, which we want to see, and your cost effective structure just makes the results that much better. And I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, any questions of Margaret Jadala here? All right. Michael, did you uh, want to make comments here at this point? Sure. Um, thank you. Uh, one thing I would like to comment uh, up front uh, before I start into the rest of this presentation is uh, we've uh, discovered we have an error in the uh, at the last meeting we approved investment policy uh, and those changes would go into effect um, next Wednesday evening. And we discovered an error that we made, and we're working with the treasurer on that with the short term cash benchmark, which has always been, you know, for 20 odd years, 91 day T bills. We changed that benchmark to the BlackRock um, Treasury Managed Fund, and uh, which is something we've tracked for some time. But unknowingly, we did uh, BlackRock liquidated the fund. As you all know, uh, this has been a really rough period uh, for cash management or short term funds uh, in the short in the rate environment and that fund became uneconomic. So we were working with the treasurer on alleviating that uh, likely to put a short term waiver in uh, policy and reverting back to 91 day T bills. But I wanted to bring that up uh, right off the bat. The, the presentation you have, what I wanted to address, um, you know, Front and center, one of the key uh, topics that we all are dealing with is the concept of inflation. And I basically have updated what I talked about at the last meetings because I think it's a great um, way to kind of think about the concept. And inflation <laughs> is one thing for us as individuals and consumers. It's it's very important for investment portfolio because it does portfolios because it does two separate things. One is it changes what the discount rates that people would put on future earnings or cash flows. And if inflation is higher, it means those uh, discount rates should rise, which means prices should fall. That's one thing. The second thing is is that it also creates an environment where the Federal Reserve would need to step in and start ratcheting down liquidity. So, uh, and that would impact the real economy. So inflation is front and center an important thing. And I talk about that a little bit along with these, uh, these other items. So um, Eric, if you'll move on to page two, let me just say inflation, I presented it in three buckets. One, I said never, and the never meant is intended, it's kind of, all these things are kind of tongue in cheek, but basically there are very long-term depressants on inflation in our economy. And that's why you have seen it. And it's a global phenomenon. It's not just the United States, but the never is what are those long-term things that are deflationary trends. Um, somebody I know very personally uh, was born in 1963 and um, the interesting thing is, is if you compare births in 1963 to 2020, there were 492,819 less births in the United States in 2020 than in 1963. The reason that's important is that's one of those long-term deflationary trends. You know, there's going to be that many less people buying cars, that many less people going to colleges, that many less people in classrooms, that is a massive long-term deflationary pressure. In the short run, it's not that big of a thing, but in the long run, it's a huge thing. Debt is another one, and we all know um, debt in the United States and most industrialized countries rising. Globalization is one. Uh, key thing there is we're seeing what may be 
a downtick in globalization, which uh, that would diminish that downward push on inflation. So globalization as a depressant may be falling. So, um, so that's the never. Then Eric, if you can move to page two, uh, three. So this is inflation being maybe or maybe not. And this is a classic way to look at inflation of goods and services as they flow through, really goods as the goods flow through the economy. And basically from the top to the bottom, it shows from crude goods to intermediate to finished goods and into the core CPI, um, how rising prices work their way through the economy. So this is a maybe, maybe not. I had this last time. I updated this chart and it looks much more inflationary than it did in March. There's no doubt about it. If you look at from the top down to the bottom, you can see all of those graphs are moving up pretty sharply. So on a kind of classic goods case, it definitely is. Um, and then Erica, if you could move to page, uh, what is that, four? Yes. So uh, the other bucket I discussed was inflation and asset prices. I think we're all very sensitive to that right now. And um, I have home prices on there because I used technology before. And um, and the reason I added that, had that, is that was the bucket that's moving over time. It was at that time. One thing that we're seeing is that asset prices, um, some things go into a bubble and then other things. Hey, Michael, hold on just a second. Somebody's got some background noise going on. If you're not yeah. speaking, mute yourself, okay? Everybody mute yourself if you're not speaking. All right, go ahead, Michael. Great. Thank you, Treasure. So, um, so the one classic thing that we're seeing, or one thing that we're seeing right now is, is that asset bubbles are moving from thing to thing. At one time, it was the tech stocks and the big tech stocks, biotechnology, uh, we've seen uh, things like Bitcoin, um, things are moving and, 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 and coming back. Obviously, residential housing is one of the most recent. This chart it shows the median retail home prices. This is a huge change. And uh, interestingly enough, it's going to be highly sensitive to the inflationary outlook because if the Fed looks and decides that this needs to, to be curtailed, it's just going to take a little bit of a rising in mortgage rates uh, to really turn this thing over. So right now, home prices are galloping higher very fast, but that could change in, a, in an instant. Um, and then, Eric, if you'll move on to uh, aggregate hours, one of the things I had I discussed before with you all is just how the um, how the underlying economy has actually looked and performed if you back up in it and the this chart, I only showed the bottom chart at the last time, which is the rate of change, and it's the rate of change is of the of the bars of the lines on the top. And the reason I added this whole chart is that if you look at the bottom and you see how that the economy went into a hard stop and the rate of change is, uh, that is the aggregate hour, people working basically last March, it just stopped. And then if you look at this big, huge spike upward, um, that tells you one part of the story. But then if you look at the chart on the top, it actually shows that aggregate hours are still lower than they were pre-pandemic. So we're having a snapback. The snapback is really fast, but total people working is in the number of hours that individuals are working is still below where we were in 2020. Um, and the next chart on page six is um, another look at the underlying economy. Um, next page, uh, Erica. There we go. So this is gasoline demand. And I had added this one again to look at, to give you a clear sense of just how impactful um, the crisis was this past year. I mean, you know, if you look at what we've gone through since 1990, uh, mid-98, uh, you know, you had the tech bubble, you had the global financial crisis, all of those instances, and you can really can't even see them on this chart. But if you look at the drop in gasoline consumption due to the pandemic, it was absolutely dramatic. And that's a 
a sign of how impactful it was on our overall economy. Um, if you move on to the next page, um, this is one of the scary charts, which is, is the median uh, price earnings for uh, S&P stocks. And the way the median is uh, calculated is they line all the companies up and they pick the one in the middle. So from top to bottom, they sort them. And so the median company has a median PE of 33.6. It's likely part of that high valuation is due to low, um, <coughs> excuse me, low um, earnings due to the pandemic, but still the number is very concerning and, 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 and we should all go into the future with the understanding that equity valuations are very high and, uh, and that will impact how they perform going forward. Um, next page on page eight um, shows the portfolio and um, you know, portfolio has had a, a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful period as Margaret mentioned uh, portfolio now is above 65.7. Actually, that uh, is a couple hundred million dollars lower than it is currently because we've had some last couple of days, some good numbers. We've gained $20 billion off the low and that low was March 23rd, 2020. And so this period you're seeing on performance is almost exactly from the, the very bottom. The real estate portfolio has grown. Now it's above 5.7 and the private equity portfolio has uh, really grown. The performance has been really good. Uh, we're, we're kind of, you know, wanting to get some distributions and all of that, but the portfolio has grown uh, really substantially. So it's a good, good thing to see. Um, on the next page, uh, page nine is uh, shows just how the portfolio has looked through the pandemic. And that shows you just the dramatic uh, rise off the bottom. The 322 uh, column was what I had presented to you at the last meeting. So just, uh, you know, just since our last meeting, the portfolio has increased in value of $4 billion. So uh, pretty dramatic change in, 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 in prices. In fact, one statistic, statistic I've been throwing around is the gross value change in the portfolio currently is is larger than the total for the past six years combined. So it's a huge change. Um, and then on the next page, um, oh, here's a here's a great one. This shows you just how strong this fiscal year is. Um, if you look at the 45 years, uh, assuming this year is uh, almost a fiscal year and we only have three more after today, there are only three more trading days in the fiscal year. Um, the return on, on this page, when I put it together is 25.3, it was somewhere, you know, it's right now it's just short of 26. So, but it's the fourth best, uh, year in 45 fiscal years. So it is a, a, a dramatically, uh, positive time for the portfolio. Um, and, uh, and definitely a great thing to see for everything. And then finally, uh, on, on the last chart, and then I'll finish up with this, and then I'm going to ask Thomas to, to say a few words about our internship program where, you know, we're starting to get back into the office. I'm not in there today, but I was yesterday, number of people coming in and out. So that's a significant change in our operation. We, uh, I mentioned the change in, in investment policy. Our targets changed a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, and we have been, um, moving the portfolio to be ready for those target change, which will go into effect next Wednesday at the close. And uh, then uh, also, again, we're having summer interns and, and, and we're responding to a very, very low uh, cash yields, which has, has caused a lot of uh, interesting things. It looks like that we're a little out of the weeds because of some actions on the Federal Reserve. So that's that pressure is easing somewhat. And then with that, Thomas, uh, you want to introduce our summer interns really quickly? So you may be muted there, Thomas. Thomas, I think you're you're still not there. Are you here? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Uh, someone decided to uh, cut some grass right next door. 
But uh, anyway, we have two interns this year from uh, Vanderbilt, um, Harris Parvez and Russell Scott. And they have finished their first year in grad school this year. And prior to Vanderbilt, uh, Harris worked in various investment areas such as valuation, investment management. Uh, moving on to Russell, uh, Russell worked uh, in, uh, in the PE sector and energy sector as a consultant. And we currently have a uh, big project underway at TCRS for them. Uh, they're currently doing credit analysis for commercial paper issuers with the senior uh, portfolio managers this year. Um, in addition, they are taking on some ad hoc research and, and other projects. So the two interns are uh, uh, very, very good fit for us. Thank you. And Treasurer, with that, that is all we have on the investment report. All right, any questions of uh, Mr. Wright, Bill, or others about the investment report that was given there? All Mr. right, Treasurer. Yes, uh huh. Sorry, it's Debbie Tay. So, uh -huh. Michael, great quarter. Um, what do you see in uh, upcoming? I mean, I know we can't possibly know what's going to happen with inflation. It looks like the infrastructure bill, you know, is going to get uh, finalized. But just kind of wondering, are you thinking that we're going to continue to see these strong performances? And then I was also interested in the viruses that um, she said we had reviewed all of our, uh, I guess, our various investment analyst or companies or whatever the correct title is and just wondered is that annual or i couldn't remember if it was like every third year and just were you part of that did you feel good about that sure thanks commissioner um on as far as the outlook goes i have i have a a, a, a lot of i'm very humble on my view of the outlook going forward this time last year, if if you would have told me <laughs> that we would have the biggest year in history yeah. or one of the top five, I just couldn't, I wouldn't believe it. Um, right. You know, we're yeah. coming out of the pandemic, the The world has come to a stop and, um, you know, the, the actions, you know, the fiscal and monetary actions uh, were huge yeah. and, and, you know, it's the way the world looks like now, highly successful. Um, I think, you know, one of the issues that we've been, the investors have been digesting calendar year to date was when the administration came in and there were all these, um, you know, hyperbole about how huge all the programs were going to be. And investors kind of took that on its word. And so they kind of basically, I think, started discounting a lot more from the program side than and they didn't really discount the political process and how there would be horse trading on that and it wasn't all going to happen and so a part of what we went through in january february march was everyone thought these programs were going to be so huge and and then the economy was already accelerating and so there was a lot of kind of concern about longer term inflationary issues i think one of the things that has gone on is is investors have become to an understanding that gosh all these things aren't just going to happen magically and are a lot more comfortable with kind of how the outlook is going to be and that's where you've seen uh interest rates kind of slowly um ease back a little bit from there where they were in just a, a month or two ago not a lot but they eased down a little bit and i think people have that's part of that whole process i think going forward it's likely that we are in a period where the economy it continues to accelerate the federal reserve is going to continue to kind of discuss taking liquidity out of the marketplace even though they're going to wait for a long time and and we just had a instance you know the week before last where they just the hint of that um created a lot of consternation in the marketplace. So I think we're gonna have a lot of those things going forward, which likely means that kind of you have slow and creep upward in interest rates on, especially on the short end over a period of time, which also kind of 
get, keeps a cap on equity valuations. I think that's the period that we're going into. Um, and they're trying their best not to do anything by they. I mean, the Federal Reserve is trying their, their best not to disrupt anything. But that's that's basically where we are. We have on our managers uh, an, a, a two kind of different processes. We monitor them on a on a, uh, basically on a moment by moment basis, and then on a uh, quarterly and annual basis, and then also every every five years we do uh, kind of a re up on where we go through we we reevaluate the managers and reevaluate the manager rosters, and that's probably what Margaret. Uh, was uh, discussing there. So it's just that process of how we go through that. Uh, so Thank I, you. sorry, just to, to elaborate. So yes, we, we monitor on an ongoing basis, but for our scope of services, we we also are um, you know, providing an annual mm -hmm. uh, an annual update on each international manager. So that's what I was referring to. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Treasurer. Okay, sure, Director. Any other questions uh, for Michael Bragg Bill to the other investment members? All right, thank you. And thank you, Thomas Kim, Deputy uh, Chief Investment Officer, for your input there on the intern program. All right, next item is item number eight political subdivision seeking participation in the town of Tiptonville in the hybrid plan. Uh, Mr. Wyman, you want to present that item? Yes, sir. Thank you, Treasurer. So, um, the town of Tiptonville has petitioned for membership in the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System effective July 1st, 2021. Uh, their information can be found on page 37 of your packet. They are adopting the hybrid plan without cost controls. They have 21 employees and their initial rate to the retirement system will be 1.1% with the employees contributing 5% of pay. Uh, the administrative committee made a motion in the committee this morning to present this to the board of trustees and recommend their um, participation in the retirement system or their admission into the retirement system as a participating employer. And with that, I make that motion on behalf of the administrative committee. All right, Mr. Wayman has moved the matter. Is there a second? I'll second it, Mr. Treasurer. All right, Secretary Hargett seconds. And before we uh, vote on that and have discussion on that, we also have the matter of item number four, the approval of minutes from March 26, 2021 meeting. Is there a motion to approve those minutes also? Man. So moved, Mr. Treasurer. All right, we have a motion a by motion. Director Tate. All right, and we have a second, okay. All righty, so uh, we have those two items, the approval of minutes of March 26, and the admission of town of Tiptonville and the hybrid plan without cost controls. Um, any discussion on those items? Seeing none, Mr. Wayne, would you call the roll? Your response on this roll call is a vote for both of these items. Thank you, Mr. Barker. Aye. Mr. Bohannon. Aye. Mr. Ellis. Aye. Dr. Fisher. Aye. Secretary Hargett. Aye. Mr. Kemp. Mr. Laney. Aye. Treasurer Lillard. Aye. Ms. Moore. Aye. Ms. Shaw. Aye. Ms. Smith. Aye. Director Tate. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. Mr. Wormsley. Aye. And I vote I as well. Uh, both of them pass. All right. Okay. Both those items are adopted. And the next item is item number nine, the opportunity for public comment pursuant to the request of the government operations committee. We ask now if there's any member of the public who has a comment on the Tennessee consolidated retirement system or on the matters that are before the board today. All right. I see none and let the record reflect that there are none. Next item is other business. Is there other business to come before the board of trustees? Seeing none, the next item is adjournment. Before we go to adjournment, I will note that 
at the bottom of your sheet, you show future uh, meetings set for September 24, 2021 and December 3, 2021. All right, Mr. Wyman, do we have board training or anything else after today's meeting? I know, sir, not today. Not today. Okay. All right. We give you the day off here. So everyone enjoy your weekend. All right. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll move Mr. Treasurer, Bob Wormsley. All right. Bob Wormsley, Moses, there are seconds. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. All right. We have numerous enthusiastic seconds on that. <laughs> Mr. Wayman, call the roll on the motion to adjourn. Those who don't want to vote Mr. for it can remain and meet with themselves. <laughs> Mr. Barker. Aye. Mr. Bohannon. Aye. Mr. Ellis. Aye. Dr. Fisher. Aye. Secretary Hargett. Aye. Mr. Kemp. Mr. Laney. Aye. Uh, Mr. Kemp voted aye by message. Um, Treasurer Lillard? Aye. Ms. Moore? Aye. Ms. Shaw? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Director Tate? Aye. <clears throat> Commissioner Williams? Aye. Mr. Wormsley? Aye. And I vote as well, unanimous. All right, unanimous in favor thereof. So the meeting is adjourned. Have a nice weekend. Okay, and thank you for your service to the TC.